Hi, it's John Severn from Severn Films. When Severn first announced the acquisition of this Lee's Fest Classic, reaction was overwhelmingly positive. But we received one letter from a disgruntled Severn fan that seemed so incredible that we decided to investigate it in person. We decided to come out here to Old Town Alexandria, Virginia, home to the Video Vault, the video store where our subject first rented this film way back in 1991. So, okay. I mean, I'll have you guys know this is the first time that I've ever talked about this before, so... You know, came pretty relaxed. So let me do this sort of in my own time, in my own way, if I could. Why are you here today? I love your titles. I love your Jess Franco releases. You guys are bringing out some of the real classics that nobody else is, and you're giving them the star treatment. Up to this point in time, um, I don't think there's a single title that isn't worth seeing, and I probably got, I'd say, twenty. Severn discs. All right, let's take you back to the night where you first saw the movie. You know, I think it had to do with what we were into at that time. And you know how they talk about marijuana being a gateway drug and next thing you know, you're hooked on heroin? It was like that with movies. Well, in the early 90s, everyone was into a bit of everything. And me and my friend John, we wanted to learn about independent film, cult film. We had curiosities we had to satiate. Because, you know, we started off um, I think it was with Russ Meyer, and we were watching Faster Pussycat, Kill Kill, lots of fun, way out there. Um, you know, I think we sort of started going through a little bit of an experimental phase uh, with other things, and you know, we needed, we we sought out increasingly bizarre entertainment. We came to this place, the Video Vault, one evening. It was a summer, I believe. We we're looking for a couple of movies, so we saw a movie that was in the corner, and it was weather beaten and kind of neglected. Right. But it had a dwarf on the cover, a smiling dwarf, and we didn't know what to think of it at first, but it was enticing. It pulled us in. For the cover of the movie, it was a picture of a a small man I would soon know as Torben. He had long hair. He had these big teeth and a smile on his face. I don't remember picking it up and even ringing it through, but it was in our hands and it drove home with us back to Arlington. I just think that if you see a title on the shelf that says Sinful Dwarf and you voluntarily pick that up and rent it, you know what you're getting into. Sinful. Right. What does sinful mean? Sinful is like little cute antics. The cover of that movie to me says buyer beware. You know, I... At that time, I guess, it didn't, I didn't have time to think about what it may have meant. It just seemed like, at the time, a good idea. You I thought didn't... it was going to be fun. It seemed like fun. It was early 90s. It was a time of discovery for all of us, but me most of all. As I had a new friend who was able to help out in the festivities. He, he gave us means of heightening our enjoyment of these, th these kinds of things, and so we were partaking of that. I'm not going to say that I haven't smoked pot, mm -hmm. and maybe I might have smoked more than uh, more than was probably reasonable during that summer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there are other things that are always thrown in there in the mix, you know. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, let's just leave it at that. So you're admitting that drugs were involved. I'm not going to disagree. I'm not going to agree. But we were looking for a mood, a vibe. Don't you think that it could have been any film that caused this reaction? You know what? The, but we watch so many movies, and usually it just makes you laugh. <laughs> You know, I mean, that was always, or it makes you laugh or sort of it enhances the whole thing. You know, you see a lot of groovy stuff. Um, trauma is something that never happened. And, you know, we watched a lot of slasher movies and, um, you know, stuff that most people find uncomfortable. Um, and it never had that effect before, you know. I mean, I can't think of a single instance. It was fun. It was all, it was all fun until the dwarf. <laughs> All I remember when I even think of Torpen, and even now I'm kind of feeling um, a bit anxious, but I remember he was little. He was a little person, right? Um, and he was just like us, but he was smaller. Right. He's a little f***ing demon bastard. That's what he is. With his cane. You know, the whole thing is just so disgusting and depraved. And I just remember awful things. I remember him smiling and laughing. <laughs> I'll tell you what it is. It's that it feels real. It really does. Help me. Are you guys doing any other bonus features about 
some of the actresses because I think if we were to look at some of those young girls, if you look at the looks on their faces, the setups for the scenes, I don't think that they emerge totally unscathed. The Anne Sparrow, you know, marvelous actress. I don't know why she was involved with this, but... Uh, Would you be surprised if I told you this was her final screen appearance? Need I say anything more? I'll come back for you later. You know, if you're familiar with the history of Torben, I mean, he was a, a children's television star. Not after Denmark. this. Not after this. Yeah, he went right back to it. I but mean, obviously, if, if, if the children of Denmark, you know, could, could cope with Torben, why couldn't a, an adult, why couldn't a grown man? Well, you're talking about a society in Denmark that grows up on child pornography. I mean, child pornography is totally legal, and so maybe there's a different standard going on there. After that night, I, there was a lot of things I was into back then, a lot of hobbies I had, uh, right. recreational hobbies, which I had to let go of. I couldn't have fun the same way after that night. A lot of things I just couldn't do. I couldn't go back to things that would bring me there again. All right. Uh... I couldn't do drugs anymore. Within a week of watching the movie, I developed a condition that is called a parasomnia. What is parasomnia? Um, I've never heard of that. Describe what is a parasomnia? A parasomnia is where you wake up screaming, okay? What about your relationships with women? It's tough. If a woman is below a certain height, I can't even look at her. What's and I'm not a off? tall man. Right. But, I mean, don't you think that... Maybe that this was some sort of latent condition that could have been brought about by anything. What the hell do you mean, latent condition? Well, it's I, mean, I, I slept, like, right I slept the like a baby until then. <laughs> I've been balanced. I've been calm. All right. With let a me, few let exceptions, I've way. always worked steadily. I'll explain. Say you've got a clinically obese person who's maybe a certain pants who size. eats like a pig. Who no, eats like that a pig. was not me. Okay, and he's gotten that way through a long and habitual pattern of behavior where he's been hurting himself by overeating, maybe cupcakes. Cupcake after cupcake he eats. Mm -hmm. And then one night he has one cupcake too many, and then suddenly his pants don't fit anymore and he has to get a whole new wardrobe. Now, don't you think the sinful dwarf might have just been that cupcake? I mean, let's follow your logic here. Mm -hmm. You've already said that this guy, I mean, he's clinically obese. It just seems to me that you're a couple of... It wasn't like he popped the Big Mac in his mouth and then went... <laughs> you know, and that's what you're suggesting here. Is I'm that si my single cupcake, which in this case was The Sinful Dwarf, the movie you're about to release, was um, was the cupcake. Are you familiar with the concept of scapegoating? We run across people like you all the time who are blaming like, their problems, their their own personal failings on a movie. Because you know, it's this, easy to do. Uh, this is what I was afraid of. It says here in this letter uh, this that you're comparing The Sinful you, Dwarf to Hitler. You pitched this whole thing to me like, um, you know, this is your opportunity to, um, for us to engage in a discussion, you sort of present it like, maybe we'll not release this title, but we need to hear your story. And, you know, you said this will be therapeutic and constructive, and now you attack me. All right, I'm going to give you a chance here to speak your piece one last time. Look into the camera and tell the general buying public why they shouldn't see this movie. <sighs> what should I say? So you're telling me that you're not persuaded. I'm going to be honest, you haven't convinced me. This is a bunch of bull****. I'm not going to pull this movie. I mean, you've heard what I've said, you've heard what Mimpani I've already said. invested six, seven hundred dollars into this title. You've heard the stories, it's like nothing else that any other movie that's generally available has done to people. I mean, it's like, let's, let's release Faces of Death. Yippee. I'm going to ask, I'm going to beg of you, don't make my mistake. Please do not watch this movie. It will traumatize you. It will probably change you in a way that isn't good. This movie can only do harm. I love your company. I love your products. Um, you guys have an amazing reputation. And here you're going to be releasing something that's going to traumatize people. And then maybe they'll look at your other titles and say, you know, oh, those are the people who release sick and twisted movies that are the reason why I take medication. <laughs>